Thank you and welcome everybody. My name is Max Edkins from the Connect for Climate program at the World Bank. Um, we're here coming to you live from the Innovate for Climate conference in Frankfurt where we've got leaders coming together to discuss innovative solutions on climate finance, on business, investments, technology, as well as a policy framework to really help accelerate the climate action agenda. Um, so with me I've got Christopher Knowles. Christopher Knowles is the uh, chair of the Green for Growth Fund as well as the head of climate finance at the EIB. Uh, thank you so very much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. So the Green for Growth Fund is one of those change makers. It is allowing for climate finance to flow and it is helping really accelerate the deployment of climate solutions on the ground. So maybe if, if you could just highlight what is the Green for Growth Fund? It's a public-private partnership. What does that really mean? It means a couple of things. It means that we are drawing capital from public and from private sources and we are blending it together in an intelligent way, we hope, um, so that uh, using the public capital we can mobilize, we can leverage more private sector capital, um, so we get the kind of the best, best of both worlds, if you like. We are also then trying to support uh, innovative uh, projects on the ground, which often struggle to get access to capital. Uh, it might be because of the type of project it is, it might be because of the country it's in. And the fund is actually now, this year, nine years old, I think it is, yes. Um, and it's still very unusual. There's nothing quite like it anywhere else in the world, to my knowledge. When we set it up nine years ago, it was real rocket science. And, you know, there have been, others are beginning to copy the, te the, the technique now, but it was a really, really good, original, creative design. Um, and we have taken 100 million, just to give you the numbers, we've got more or less 100 million in private capital now. We've got 100 and... 2030 million, I think it is of taxpayers' capital, public capital, government money, and then we have a bit in the middle, um, which comes from institutions like EIB and KFW and IFC, the development banking community. Great. And altogether, it adds up to about 500 million. That's really impressive. And, 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 and you really highlight that it is one of the first of its kind to open up these risky markets, these risky technologies. and. And, and make an opportunity for, uh, you know, innovative technologies and innovative solutions. Could you maybe just explain what, what kind of projects it has funded in the past and, and what your portfolio is looking at going forwards? The focus is on energy efficiency, so we are, and, and, and with a little bit of renewable energy generation as well. Um, so we've done a lot of uh, energy efficiency projects for the industrial sector, putting in um, heat change plant in sugar refineries in, 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 in the Balkans, for example. Uh, we have done run-of-the-river hydro schemes in the Balkans. Uh, it's, it's the only kind of hydro you can do these days. Um, we've done uh, onshore wind in, 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 in Georgia. Um, we are doing uh, solar projects in, in Egypt. There's a whole range of different technologies. Um, in, in, these, in these different markets. And, and, and just to highlight the linkage to climate change, so, so a lot of that is, is an energy solution. So we know that about 70% of greenhouse gases come from energy emissions because of our use of fossil fuels. Um, where do you aim to take the fund going forwards? Are you going to be rolling out into other sectors? Um, and, and what kind of financial instruments are you going to be uh, bringing to the market to help uh, energy-based and, and other solutions-orientated technologies be deployed? How long is a piece of string? <laughs> a, I mean, there's still a, you know, it's, it's, it's a 500 million fund. It's actually financed 600 million of projects because we roll the capital over, which is part of the beauty of it. So we're getting more efficiency from the use of the capital, from a finite amount of capital. Um, where it will go next will depend to some extent where the investors want it to go next and it's a combination of governments who often have target areas or so the German government for example which has provided much of the soft capital has had certain priority geographies and priority assets that it wanted to support some of the institutional investors we have can only work in certain regions so it's always a little, uh, little jigsaw game we have to play 
Um, but we want to broaden out the, the geography slowly. We want to deepen the penetration we have in certain markets. Deepening the penetration means growing the fund, growing the fund, and growing the fund means continuing to raise capital for it. Um, we want to raise capital from the private sector. We always have to get a careful balance because too much capital from the private sector and the, cap the cost of the capital becomes quite difficult. Uh, you know, this is primarily about impact investing. This is primarily about avoiding uh, greenhouse gas emissions. It's not primarily about profit maximizing, um, although we run it as a private sector fund with a private sector management team based here in Frankfurt, Finance in Motion. Um, and uh, yeah, as I say, we will grow it as fast as, basically as fast as the capital allows us to grow it. Well, well, perfect. And, and this is really an exciting time to be in this space where sustainable and green finance is, is, is becoming more and more available. Um, so, so just to give an indication of the excitement out there, I also heard that you ran an innovation challenge to uh, pull out innovative uh, business ideas, innovative technologies, which was climate. Um, we, as, as a Connect for Climate program at the World Bank, also help support that. Um, so, so maybe you just could highlight the interest that is being shown in this space of innovation and, and, and encouraging new technologies and new business models to help solve climate change. Hmm. Well, part of the aim of the fund is indeed to, to promulgate awareness to, and, and we in the same spirit, we do very in-depth impact reporting. So anybody who wants to actually understand how many tons of CO2 have been avoided with the, the dollar they put in, they can do that. But another way is, is the way you've just described. Uh, we organize this uh, international competition, uh, basically for, for young people, people who've got an idea but not necessarily got capital and for whom a little bit of capital can make all the difference you know, in a relatively quite small amount. We're talking tens of thousands here, not, not, not hundreds of thousands or even millions. Uh, and we got 260 applications from people in 80 different countries for this for this competition uh, and the, the management team is currently going through the selection process, the screening process and uh, uh, there will be an announcement of the successful candidates um, at the end of uh, June here in Frankfurt uh, when, when actually in the same building come to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> well fantastic and, and that's really symbolic of how young people are, are coming on board and are realizing that this is a, an exciting space. Um, I mean, Al Gore has called it the, the sustainability revolution, which is going at the speed of the technical revolution, of the digital revolution, but at the scale of the industrial revolution. Mm. So this is really an exciting space for young people to, to join the new climate economy. So maybe just uh, your message for, for a younger audience. We are live on Facebook, so how, how would you encourage them to be a part of this grand transition to a low-carbon resilient future? I think, I think actually that generation, you know, and I'm in my mid-60s now, so there's at least two generations behind me currently in the workplace, but that generation is, 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 it gets it so much better than my generation does. You know, my generation is the, kind of the last of the dirty generation, I would, like to, I would say. You know, we were the people who really had to be educated in midlife about the damage, the, the, the economic model, the, the societal model we have been actively pursuing and you know it's a it's a post-war generation there was a lot of hardship uh, there were people wanted the good things again they had been deprived for quite a long time but it clearly is not a sustainable model and my own children even my very small grandchildren uh, uh, will look at me rather critically when i arrive in my nice car and you know daddy that's that's got a that's got a lot of power in the engine <laughs> and it's not a very you know it's not a big car even so no there's a much higher level of awareness is what i really want to say and the five-year-old kids when they're in school these days they are getting lessons in when you're cleaning your teeth don't let the water keep on running don't let the tap running you you know yeah. wet the brush turn the tap off clean your teeth Wet the brush again, end of story. Turn the light off when you go out of the room. Uh, walk instead of, uh, instead of waiting for mommy and daddy to give you a lift. All of this stuff is being ingrained into them. And the younger people we now recruit, uh, they have this fantastic awareness. I mean, uh, they, are, they are much more value-oriented than my generation. Where I worry about a lot of things that we're leaving behind. But one of the things I worry about much less is the awareness of that generation coming through now. And we do it in the response of this, of this climate competition, that there's people out there with ideas, with energy, with enthusiasm, and they want, 
they, they want to do the right thing by the planet. And, and that's very much the message also here at the Innovate for Climate conference that, you know, we are in the midst of this transition and it is, it is going to go down in history as a time when we transitioned away from a fossil fuel based economy to one that will be low carbon resilient. And finance is so important in that technology, innovation, um, as well as the investments. So with that, I'd like to thank you so very much for being with us at this live discussion on, on Connect for Climate's Facebook page. Thank you very much indeed. It was a pleasure to be here. And keep on following us with the hashtag InnovateForClimate. Join the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you.